Hey everybody, Jane Clapp, I'm the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, and we are totally excited. Uh, today is our spring meeting, and I'm being quiet because I'm outside of the different meeting rooms. So we have committee meetings happening this morning, and we have issue caucuses um, like Native American, Latino, um, African American, the Black Caucus, uh, LGBTQ Caucus, all of those caucuses are happening this morning. And then at 1.30, we will be streaming live in full um, the entire State Central Committee meeting. And that will actually be done by a professional with like really good lighting, we hope, and that will all work out good. So, hi, Jane. <laughs> Lots of good Democrats are arriving, so I'm gonna just go in into a couple of the meeting and so folks can see what's happening, what Democrats do. We meet, we plan, we organize, we elect Democrats. If you want to speak, you know, can. Here, I'm going to say I this. thought. You know, this uh, evangelist Patty is going to do this. Right. He's going to raise six points and three million oh. dollars. Okay. Well, where have those, where are those millionaires been? I got to get Frank off this bandwagon. Here's what I'm concerned about: about is that he might give somebody a comfort level. Oh, all right. County, the chair's chairs is looking for you. I'm, I'm Officer looking Zay. for them. How far away? <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm going to walk over to the... Um, training that's happening by one of our organizers named Jacob. He works for the state party and he is doing a training on how to organize around town halls, how to um, show up at members of Congress's offices when they're not representing us on the issues that we care about. And so that's what I am headed to now. I will just turn this around and everybody doing breakfast. There's Eric. He's our political and field director, Facebook Live. <laughs> and these are all of our awesome volunteers who made breakfast happen. Stephanie, she's the goddess. She's our convention chair and she's literally planned everything for this meeting. So without her, we would be nothing. And I'll just show you quickly. This is Jason. He's setting up the very professional live stream that's going to happen later at 1.30. Um, so it's not somebody holding a camera for three hours and their arm begins to shake. Yes. So it's Tripods like, are nice. Tripods are a good thing. Yeah, and I, yeah so we're actually uh, we're getting a really good test stream right now. The IT guys hooked us up. Awesome. Yay. They uh, gave us some internet, which is what we need to do this. Which is awesome. And then I'll just say this is where the speakers are going to be later at 1.30. And we have all of the maps of the different offices that are up in Nebraska that people can run for. Just as a constant reminder that this is something that we need to be working on and recruiting on. 
these main responsibilities of not only me as the chair of the party, but all the officers and all the Democrats everywhere. If you know of somebody who should be running for office, school board, city council, state senate, congress, governor, attorney general, there are many offices that are up in 2018. And in 2017, we have city elections happening in Lincoln and Omaha. So April 4th is the primary, and you can vote. You can register to get an application by mail, vote by mail, early ballot right now. Um, or you can go into the ballot box and vote for the primaries on April 4th. And then the general election is May 2nd for Lincoln and May 9th for Omaha. So I'm going to turn the camera around to show Jacob's training, who is doing a training on how to organize. Facebook events 
posted that had several hundred people RSA are already RSVP to be there. So that's the kind of energy that we have right now that's happening in these groups to hold these town halls. It pays to be prepared. Exactly. For and, any opportunity. And we, town halls are a perfect place for pressure on the members of Congress to ask questions and everything. I know um, uh, Congressman Fortenberry held one in Lincoln uh, last mm -hmm. week. Um, recently, and uh, it was Monday. Was it Monday? Okay, great. Thank you. All my days are kind of blurred together this week, prepping for this meeting and doing everything. It's been great. So, um, but he did not hand out a microphone to anyone. Yeah. He held it in his own hand. You had to yell to ask your question. Half the room could not hear it. But then, some media reports were that that people were were yelling at him, and that he was facing a large crowd. And while, in some cases, that was very true, but half the time, it was them just trying to ask questions because he wouldn't give them the mic for everyone to hear. Mm -hmm. So when we hear reports about, you know, they're afraid of unruly crowds and stuff, just let us talk. Just let us, just let us say something. So these town halls are incredibly important when they happen. Can, can, can I answer questions afterwards? I just want to make sure we get through, through the presentation and we can talk after, is that all right? Can, can you have him repeat the question? See, that, that was yeah, yeah. He, he said that he wants to take questions after. <laughs> he wants to get yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so but yeah, I'll speak we, we, we can talk about we can talk about all this stuff at the end. Um, and so the seventh is trainings like this. I am providing these for any group that would like them. Um, I will sit down with individuals and talk with them. I will. I have several meetings already set up with uh, suit up Nebraska leadership, Indivisible. Omaha, Invisible Nebraska, um, all, all these new groups. Um, trainings unite, obviously, a very unique chance for us to sit down and talk about strategies, to talk about exactly what each one of our experiences has, because everyone in this room has a different experience doing this, and we need to come together now as one movement. So coming together and talking about these trainings, having these um, set up, allows us to kind of better us going forward. So those are the seven tactics that we use um, very often. So the next part is executing um, your plan. So beforehand, um, these are kind of checklists that might be helpful um, if you're planning something. Um, so proper execution is incredibly important, as I'm sure you all know. So the very first one is find a location or event to organize. Um, the public calendar is a great, great place to start. Um, we need to obviously. We don't want to. We don't. We don't want to be competing mm. with, with with each other. We want to work together. We have common goals. Um, so find a location and a time that doesn't interfere with an event already planned, or work together with that event. Like hop on, promote them, assist them in in their work. Um, the second is choose a tactic. One of the seven that we're doing. Um, I really, really encourage you to mix up the tactics. A lot, of, a lot of people get very burnt out if it's a continuous tactic. Um, and each tactic has a different, what we call level of engagement. Um, like making a phone call is easier than going to a rally or asking a question at a town hall. Attending a town hall is easier than asking a question, but asking a question at a town hall takes a level of confidence that some people aren't necessarily comfortable with. So mixing up the tactics helps your members and helps everything very well. It also helps earn more media. If you're doing the same thing day in and day out, they won't cover that. But if you're mixing it up, you're changing it, you have a unique idea of how to bring attention to what's happening, you're more likely to earn some media coverage. So next is setting a meeting time and place. Um, so for volunteers and leadership and the organizers of each event, make sure that everyone is aware of the plan, the goal for the event, exactly what we're trying to get done. All right, we wanna have 50 people outside of the members um, office with signs specifically about the ACA repeal, like that. And we want two TV cameras there. Just those kind of very specific, very attainable goals. Um, and then it just keeps, just try and keep everyone focused. You know, we always have that little bit of and we want to do so much. So then the next step 
is make a recruitment plan and go, oh, you're fine, no worries. Um, so talk about exactly how you're going to recruit for this event. Um, we'll go over the tactics for recruiting here later in the presentation. Um, and then so then make a list of resources required. Are you going to need signs? Are the organizers going to need to make the signs? Or are we just going to say everyone, hey, bring a sign with an issue that works for you? Um, if it's going to be hot that day, are you guys going to bring some bottles of water um, for people if they're going to be out that day? Like, just think through all these scenarios. We talked about it earlier. Be prepared for 100 things to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And be prepared just to deal with it when it does. Um, so then invite people you already know. Um, reach out to your friends. If you're a part of these new groups that are organizing online, email lists, um, county parties, any sort of that. Friends on Facebook, like, hi, I went to high school with you. I think you're pretty progressive. How, like, come with me to this. Like, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're recruit attendees and assign roles. Um, who's gonna Who's gonna bring signs? Who's gonna Who's gonna call the press? Who's gonna write the press release? Things like that. Uh, prepare your materials. Write the press advisory. Uh, send it to press. Uh, and then tell the story of your event on social media. So we'll talk about this a little bit more, but for best digital practices, it's best to tell an actual story of it. Like do a before, us prepping for the event. Look at how we're getting ready, look, we're so excited for it. That also helps with your recruitment tactics. And then during this event, come join us, we're here. Like look at everyone who's here, this is fantastic. Like Facebook Live, Facebook, tweet about it. Um, call your friends, FaceTime them, all that good stuff. Would you um, include, when you're talking about the press, deciding up front who's going to be the only spokesperson for the event? I've been to events where yeah, 10 people speak and there's no co coherent story. Yeah. I think it's really important yeah. that you have either the, the planner or whoever's the chair. Um, it, 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 it depends on the group. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on if it is a, you know, a coordinated group and you would like one spokesperson. Thank you, you are too kind. <laughs> Thanks. So that's just a little uh, sampling of one of the trainings that's happening today. We have other trainings happening as well, um, like how to support our immigrant and refugee communities that um, are coming to Nebraska. You may not know this, I didn't know it until about a month ago that Nebraska has and welcomes the most refugees and immigrants on a per capita basis. That's one, because we have both small and big towns in order to make sure that folks can get acclimated. We also have a strong network of churches um, that really welcome and um, essentially adopt different refugee families. So they have a Nebraska family as the refugee families making Nebraska their home, helping them through each step of the way. We have Lucas Nelson playing in the background his music, in case you guys don't know, Willie Nelson's son. Look him up, Promise of the Real, one of the best bands out there. And um, we have these welcome baskets that we've been making. So I'm just gonna kind of show you all the work that Democrats have done over the last about month and a half. So when President Trump, um, who I like to admire in chief, when he put in his racist travel ban, um, we put out a call to action to Democrats across the state saying, help us create welcome baskets for refugee and immigrant families who are making Nebraska their home. And the response has been incredibly overwhelming and just really heartwarming that so many Nebraskans across our state sent in these baskets with just the basic stuff that you need when you are starting a new home whether it's diapers and toilet paper and towels, um, but there's also dishes and blankets and rice cookers, um, utensils. And so we've been doing this for the last about month and a half. And this isn't even all of the baskets, if you can believe that. We um, have a tremendous amount of baskets inside the office as well. Um, but this is just what Democrats do, right? We not only keep elected officials accountable and we run for office ourselves, but we also make sure that we're c connecting to our community on the issues that deeply affect all of us. And we made sure that we had individuals write a little note 
to the families. And then inside each basket, there's also a letter from the Nebraska Democratic Party welcoming the family to Nebraska. Um, it's signed by me as chair of the party, and then we include a sticker in there for them to put on their car, um, and also includes a voter registration form, and just has our contact information in case they want to reach out and have any questions. There's a big misconception that, um, you know, immigrants come to our country as unskilled, and the reality is there are some deep political leaders that are making Nebraska their home. Um, we have individuals that led political parties um, that had to flee um, their countries because of violence. And that's their way of protecting their family is, is coming to America to make it their home. And so we really want to make sure that folks are embraced by the Nebraska Democratic Party. Um, I think back in the day, this used to happen when folks came to Ellis Island. Uh, the Democratic Party was there with welcome baskets and with food and with voter registration forms. And so we are doing that same thing. So lastly, I just want to show folks one last We are really trying to develop a small donor program. Um, so we have a monthly donor program. You can become a monthly donor if you go on democrats.org. And if you become a monthly donor at $5 or above, you get not only a really cool bumper sticker, you also get a ticket to our Morrison Exxon dinner, which is our annual big fundraiser, which will happen this fall, where we have a big national speaker come in. Last year it was uh, Representative Ellison. And if you become a monthly donor at any of our events, uh, the added bonus is you get a t-shirt. Um, so that's pretty awesome and cool. And we have these new buttons that Justin Kimmerling designed for us, and we had volunteers make. And we have new brochures now, so when counties or uh, volunteers are tabling at county fairs, we actually have materials to give out to folks. And then we have these really cool yard signs now, which we're excited about. So when people are um, in election season and they want to show that they are a Democratic household, um, we have this really cool sign that you can put in your yard, along with all the candidate signs, to show that you are a proud Democrat, both in the streets and in the voting booth. So here's some more of the stickers and really cool buttons that we have. We have these new posters that we're doing when we have town halls and communities um, to show like old school way of us talking about the issues. That's the amazing Donna and Cecilia. I will volunteer for anything for a wonderful name tag. This is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys are so good. And these are the Black Caucus t-shirts. So yeah, we're rocking it. These books, if you haven't heard about it yet, are by Becky Bond and Zach Exley. They worked on the Sanders campaign. And they have this whole new philosophy that we should be knocking every door. So we catch those that are registered, those that aren't registered, independents, and Republicans that may agree with us. Um, so it's something that we're actually testing out with the Nebraska Democratic Party in certain communities. There's Linda, who also happens to be the state director for Bold. Um, and then this is our little registration area. And we now have like these name tags so everybody knows who's a voting member, who's on exec, or who's a volunteer or staff. And then lastly, and then I will close this Facebook Live session, um, we have the ever beautiful Lily, who is manning or womaning the table for the Lancaster Democratic Party, who has these amazing t-shirts called Resist and Persist. Uh, and then of course the, the pink pussycat hats, which were became famous at Donna's the Women's March. Oh yeah, Don is wearing them, they're awesome. And then yeah, the Lancaster Democratic Party t-shirts, they are our hosts today. Uh, so they have a table out as well. Um, and how cool can you do? Like, this is my party shirt. Amen to that. So, are you going to register as a Democrat when you turn 18? 2024. <laughs> and what are the issues that you think your generation cares about? The ones that we should care about and the ones that we do care about. Uh, the, well, both. Both. Um, a lot of kids care about legalized marijuana, mm -hmm. especially because of all the diseases being found and trying to cure, trying to be cured. And then I think everyone should care about uh, agriculture because we live in a state where everything is based off of agriculture, and it's hard to keep going that way without it. Amen. Yeah, yeah I love it. So her mom is Linda, and her dad is Mark, who's a teacher. 
um, they're being raised in the streets and knowing that we have to elect good Democrats in order to keep these issues alive. So that is it. We will be back Facebook Live at 1.30, and it won't be me with my shaky hand that's going all over the place. <laughs> we, have, we have a professional person who's doing the Facebook Live today. Thank God. Um, so we had rotated it between volunteers last time, and it didn't work. People's batteries were dying. It was a disaster. Um, but we are getting much better. We make improvements every time. So go to NebraskaDemocrats.org, uh, see the different events that we have coming up. Our Facebook page has all the events, um, including town halls that we learn about and all that good stuff. Representative Bacon is still being a coward um, and still breaking his campaign promise. He has yet to hold a public town hall. So keep the pressure up keep recruiting candidates for local office and don't forget if you live in Lincoln and Omaha your primary is on April 4th and the general election for Lincoln is May 2nd and the general election for Omaha is May 9th we got to elect Heath Mello as mayor of Omaha all the Democrats running for City Council in Omaha in Lincoln and our school board members that are Democrats in Lincoln are uncontested because they did such an amazing job these past years um, so they're gonna be reelected see you guys in the streets see you in the voting booth and see you at 1.30.